Hello learners, in this unit related to distribution of Indian paintings, we will focus on the different time periods of Indian history, the geographical locations of various paintings in India, the distinctive features in time periods of India and how paintings are integrally related with cultural tourism in India. So, let us start our discussion on the distribution of paintings in India. Indian paintings are traditionally carried by the people from the prehistoric period of Indian culture. The art of painting in India is classified into several time periods, each of them reflect particular religious, political and cultural developments. Art on the the painting were normally shown on the walls of cave, temples and palaces. We have learned in the first video that painting is the visual documentation of man's thought and experiences. Painting captures the emotions and expressions and retains the impact for a very long time period. Painting is essentially a combination of lines, forms, colors tones, texture and space. It attempts to convey the spoken and unspoken expressions with the strokes of a brush. And the traditional art of Indian painting had begun from Indus Valley civilization where we have lot of figures which are found on the remains of the civilization. Now let us discuss the overall geographical distribution of Indian paintings. Literally evidence provide that painting was a highly developed art in ancient India. Palaces and the home of the rich were adorned with beautiful murals and small paintings were made on prepared hoards. We had professional artists both men and women of educated classes who handled the painting activities. The surviving remains of ancient Indian paintings are sufficient to show the achievements of paintings especially in reference to morals in certain cave temples. Now let me discuss with you uh, the prehistoric paintings and the places where they are found. The earliest painting in India have been found in the primitive caves and rock shelters in Mirzapur and Banda in Uttar Pradesh, Mehdubha hills of Vindhya range in Bundelkhand, Lerimur hills in the areas of Bhagilkhand, Shringapur in Raigada district of central India and Bellari in the south. These paintings are mainly hunting scenes representing man in his encounter with wild animal. The paintings though in crude technique represent with, with pictures of hunt. Red pigment has been freely used. Some of the figures have got washed off due to the ch changes of time. In a well preserved scene there is a hunt of a bison and a sambar. The human figures are conventional in nature. So we have basically the paintings uh, where the focus is on the head dominating the rest of the body. The hands and the feet in all cases appear as just straight. The handling of the javelin is again an important part of the painting as an effort to protect oneself from the attack of animals. One of the animals at Signapur represents a barking dog rushing forward at a terrific pace, the trail stretched out and the legs indicating the speed of its motion. This is in contrast with the stylic form of painting where we had human figures. All these paintings are not ornamented, very few number of tourists are attracted towards them. These sites need lot of conservation efforts and some of them lack tourist infrastructure facilities and are, are also not promoted for tourism. Many historians and archaeologists are interested in them. Some of these sites are located on mountain ranges and are poorly connected with metropolitan towns of India. 
Now the government is taking up number of initiatives uh, to promote prehistoric paintings as they have the potential of becoming a major cultural tourist attraction. So the development of this site is taking place. After this, let me take you to another place in India, which is Panchmani Hills in Madhya Pradesh. In the Panchmani Hills, most of the paintings are from the Charcoalithic to the historical period. Conflict is one of the main themes depicted during this time. War scenes are common, but reasons for conflict are not indicated. Horsemen armed with swords and shield overlie the earlier paintings portraying the life of hunters and gatherers. They wear elaborate war equipment consisting of spears, axes, swords, shield, daggers and bows and arrows. Few individuals carry drums and trumpets and foot soldiers as well as men riding horses and elephants are depicted. Goats, dogs, oxen, donkey and performing monkeys accompany the troop. The descendants of the original hunters and gatherers and artists of this region are the tribals Korku and Gon who still uphold some of the traditions of their ancestors. In the wrong paintings, their ancestors are depicted dancing in pair or in row and playing musical instruments. They hunted animals and collected honey from the wild bees. The mood of dress was quite simple. The woman carried food and water and looked after the children. The forebearers of the present day tribal people had a variety of ways to express the magic of their belief, rituals and taboos. The tribals living in these hills have number of wooden memorial boards on which they have paintings of carved horse and its rider which is similar to the one which was painted by their predecessors in the past on the walls of their rock shelters. Even today they decorate the wall of their houses and this activity seems to have its true roots in the cave dwelling tradition of their ancestors. Men and ho horses of geometric construction are randomly spaced across the walls. Such paintings are done during the rainy season and on festival occasions and bear a cruise resemblance to those founded in the painted shelters. After understanding the primitive form of painting, let us now move to the era of classical painting. The earliest substantial remains are those found in the rock cut caves at Ajanta in western India. They belong to the second or first century BC and the style is found at various parts especially at the relief sculpture at Sanchi. At Ajanta, we have lots of remains of Indian paintings where we get an insight about the ancient Indian civilization. The painting is a work of several artists. They decorated the walls and ceilings of numerous cave temples and monasteries at the site. They had executed fine technique of painting on smooth surfaces and had used the application of plaster while painting. The themes normally Buddhist in nature illustrate the major events of Buddha life, the Jataka tales and the various divinities who were involved in expanding the Buddhist religion. Let us discuss more about these in detail. The earliest historical paintings in India belong to the Satvahana period in Deccan. During this period, some of the most glorious Buddhist caves were excavated in the living rocks, mainly in western India and places such as Nasik, Bhaja and Karla. These are the famous places. The earliest caves at Ajanta also belong to the Satvahana period. The paintings are concentrated in cave number 9 and 10. The paintings cover the wall, pillars and ceilings to illustrate scenes from the life of Master Buddha and his previous life comprising of the Jatakas and the followers. There are also floral and animal motifs which are created by the painters. 
Cave 9 is a Chaitya hall with a fine facade and has pillars throughout the hall. The cave has two layers of paintings. Uh, the earliest is contemporary with the structure and the latest, the other one is related to the 5th century AD. These paintings have shown the worship of Bodhi tree, the Sama, Jatka, Vatika succeeded the Satvanas in the Deccan. So these caves at Ajanta have also inscriptions of the Vataka period. The paintings completely cover the wall, pillars and ceilings. They constitute a great gallery of Buddhist art illustrating scenes from the life of Buddha. The material used is simple material. Generally five colors are used which comprise of red arch, yellow arch, lamp black, lepus and white. The first coating on the rock was of clay mixed with rice, husk and gum. A coat of lime was done over this which was carefully smoothened and polished and on this crown paintings were created. The outline drawing was in dark brown or black and subsequently colors were added. Effect of light and shade were achieved by the process of dots illustrating the methods of painting which is mentioned in various texts. The lines composing the figures painted at Ajanta are rich in form and depth and recall the lines in praise of the effective line drawing in the Vedshala where number of painters were given guidance and training. The painters at Ajanta had studied life around them, the natural scenes, they focused the nature beauty with intense sympathy and appreciation. Plant and animal life had interested them considerably. They had focused on flora and fauna also, for example, the elephants under the banyan tree in cave 10, the deer that is depicted in some caves are examples of the approach of the painter to the themes of animal and birds. He had also equally represented the magnificence of royal court, the simplicity of rural life and the tranquility around the surroundings. There are excellent illustrations in these paintings of six limbs of the god. The diversity of form of Ajanta is indeed incredible. The painters here have vast mastered the vast complex of human, animal and plant form in addition to giving free shapes to their imagination and creating new designs. The masters at Ajanta had control over not only the proportion of individual figures but also had the ability to group them and design them with excellent compositions. Emotions were the core of these paintings with reference to narration of schemes from the legend. These cave paintings achieved fame because they were promoted, conserved well by the government and they have become an important tourist attraction. The tourism infrastructure is well developed in these areas and it is quite convenient for the tourists to reach these places. Numerous package tours are being conducted mainly from Aurangabad which is the nearest headquarter. After Ajanta, now let us move to Ellora. In the 8th century, the early western Chalukya power came to an end and the Rashtrakutas asserted themselves. Danti Durga was one of the Rashtrakuta ruler who was followed by his uncle Krishna I, who was not only a great ruler but also a creator of unique monument in Deccan. The Kailashnath temple at Ellora is carved out of a living rock. The painting at Elora covered the ceilings and wall of the mandaps and represent not only the iconographic form but also the lovely floral designs in animals and birds in various patterns. The Natraj here is a splendid example of the Chalukya type. The figure is multi-armed 
and the dance is in a specific posture. The anatomy of the figure, the details, the ornamentation that closely followed is of such a minute detail that we get an insight about the elaboration of decoration and the art of painting. It is one of the most beautifully preserved panels at Elora. The Jain caves towards the end of the group of caves at Elora has its entire surface of ceiling and wall covered with paintings with lot of details. There are scenes illustrating Jain text and decorative patterns with floral, animal and bird designs. In this area also, the tourism infrastructure facility is well developed and the paintings are enjoyed by the tourist. After understanding these, let us now move to the different styles that developed in various parts of India. Let me take you to the Eastern Indian style. Small illustrations on palm leaf, chiefly painted at the great Buddhist establishment of Eastern India, appears to have conserved some elements of ancient time and they are again an example of the paintings that flourished in the eastern part of the country. The surviving paintings date from 11th and 12th century and have numerous Buddhist gods. Narrative representations have largely disappeared. However, uh, with the destruction of the Buddhist centers by the Islamic invaders, there was a decline in the Eastern Indian style of painting. Another important area from the geographical point of view as far as painting is concerned is the Bagh caves. We all know that great Gupta emperors were great patrons of art and literature. The aesthetic quality of Samudra Gupta is very well known. This phase of painting art is amply illustrated in the caves close to a village park near Kualia where we had excavations also and we could find number of caves especially cave number 2, 4 and 5. The paintings in the Bark palace suggest an important event in the royal household and the procession associated with it. It is one of the most magnificent representation of royal processions of that time. On other walls and on the ceilings of this cave, we have floral decorations which are very pleasing and we have lot of paintings related to flowers, especially the lotus. Birds of pears are also found. So these traditions were continued by the Gupta period and we find that in the southern part of India also, lot of paintings were developed which focused on the aesthetic mindset of the painters. We have paintings in Mahabalipuram also and we find them in Pallava cave temples and Kailashnath temple at Kanchipuram, at Badami and Hampi also this decorative factor was present. So we find that the temples constituted an important area where the painter's art flourished, especially during the time of Cholas. At Lipakshi in Andhra Pradesh, we find one of the most remarkable paintings of the Vijayanagara period, a painting which is related with the Vidharbha style on the ceiling of the mandap. The scenes are depicted here are from the Mahabharata the Ramayana and the Puranas. We have the coronation of Rama, Arjuna and his fights and the role of Krishna which was widely depicted by the painters. After this, let us move to the medieval part of India. This was a time of trans transition in Indian painting. The belief earlier held by the scholars was that the Islamic rulers of India did not patronize any painting until the rise of Mughal dynasty in 16th century. But we find that this art flourished at the regional level and we do have patrons of painting in the 
Sultanate period also, the native Indian rulers did not turn towards the other styles of painting, but they helped in the growth and development of regional style of painting. During this period, we find a synthesis of Indo-Islamic painting and the Indo-Persian style emerged, which was basically based on the school of Iran and had influenced the choice of the painters and the paintings of that time period. We have paintings dating from 15th century onwards. The most important is the painting of the Amir Khusro, which was very well appreciated. In this time period also, miniature paintings flourished. They had a flavor of Persian paintings, but had the charm of Indian tradition also. The study of Mughal paintings in India started with Khwaja Abdus Samad of Shriza, who was patronized by Humayu. And this practice continued during the time of Mughal court. The Babar Nama, Akbar Nama, Humza Nama and Razam Nama are the texts which illustrate the artistic achievements of this period. The Mughal paintings were aristocratic, individualistic in nature and were fostered by nobility. The significance of the court, the delightful wild animals depicting elements of fight between elephants and camel, scene of hunting and decoration are important part of medieval painting. In this we have flowers and leaves and plants where we have the paintings which were patronized and we notice a Persian and an Arabic influence on the Indian painting style. The miniature painting movement emerged as a powerful movement in Gujarat and Rajasthan and spread to central and eastern India also. So important places during this point is Mandu in Madhya Pradesh, Jaunpur in eastern Uttar Pradesh and Bengal again was a center for painting. So we find that paintings developed with a new style and a new category of painting emerged. In this video learners, we have studied that the distribution of painting is all across India. To sum up, we can say that during the prehistorical painting era, the focus was on hunting schemes, food gathering activities as well as on the local traditions. But later on the art of painting flourished and we have classical examples of Ajanta and Alora caves, Bark caves where the Indian painters have achieved excellence as per global standards. The medieval rulers also patronized painting, however regional schools emerged and we find that there are prominent centers of painting all across India. Painting is an integral part of cultural tourism of India. Many Westerners visit India to understand the technique of painting and analyze its achievements. It has huge potential to attract cultural tourism and help the tourist to understand how these arts have conserved Indian culture till date. Thank you.